Hey guys, when you watched a docu-series of the Timepiece Gentlemen, because apparently, I didn't know this, one of them is being made as we speak. So according to I think Yahoo News, our deadline, the Wonderland, MCG's Wonderland to develop docu-series on the Timepiece Gentlemen scandal in the Beverly Hills. So it looks like a docu-series. So typically what happens is you produce the docu-series and then you try to sell it to Netflix or Amazon after it is produced. So if you remember, one of the things that Anthony wanted most in life was to have a Netflix or some type of TV show right, uh, with Mark Wahlberg. He was going to basically pester Mark Wahlberg every single day until he gave up. And then Mark Wahlberg would definitely, you know, answer Anthony's Instagram message one day, totally not creepy or anything like that, and then agreed to act as Anthony in the, you know, in the uh, timepiece gentleman saga. So maybe Anthony, all Anthony's dreams, all Anthony's, you know, yeah, Maybe all of Anthony's dreams, all Anthony's vision becomes true. And that would be great. I think that would be funny uh, to have the end result be exactly what the vision was. People make fun. Uh, people make fun of the vision board. But his vision board was very, very clear. The vision board was something where he always had documentary this, documentary that. And he always knew what he wanted was to become famous at essentially any and every cost. Well, uh, should we all be all that surprised that he may achieve this fame in a Tiger King-like, and again... People have done, you look at Buggy 2988, you look at, um, you look at other YouTube channels like Illuminati, uh, the completionist, which we also cover. Fame is really addicting, man. It is everything to some people. And they're willing to pursue, they're willing, I mean, if you're willing to do crimes for the fame, you might as well make it a docu-series, right? And it's, it has everything. It has jail. Uh, docu-series need jail time. And it has that jail time. It has the interesting collapse, you know, the rise in the fall, which is exactly Martin Scorzelli. Scorzelli he's getting a docu-series, Tinder Swindler, um, all of these crypto programs, right? I mean, they all love and they all follow a very simple kind of storyline which Anthony does as well. So Anthony is a interesting individual because he might end up getting exactly what he wanted all along, which is a Amazon or a Netflix series. And in that case, do, do the ends justify the means? And when I mean that, I really do mean it. I mean, it is quite fascinating and really surprising that he people are interested and people are interested in him and people are interested in the longevity and the story and the nature of the story and it's just going to it's just a great story now if you are a victim maybe they can compensate you and maybe this is the way that you get money um, I'm positive that some of this money should be paid out to victims uh, if I am ever interviewed I would definitely donate all money. So I'm saying this, I would love to be interviewed and I would donate all money to the victims, uh, whoever, like, I don't know how we would figure this out, but in a percentage. So whatever I make, I would just donate equally as a percentage of loss. If that makes sense. So if you lost more because you assigned more watches, you get more money. And I would love to be one of the main characters. I think having Mike Rubin, I honestly think like Boogie 2988, the documentary on him was quite amazing. <laughs> Someone to do a documentary like that on Anthony. 
Um, I think that would be very, very cool to do. And to be quite honest with you, like, why not, right? I mean, <laughs> why not? It, it's it's out there. I'm sure he is not exactly, you know, sitting. he's in sitting in jail, right? And... Yeah, I, I, why, why not? I mean, why would you not do it, in my opinion? Because he can make some money in jail, make some payments in restitution, and maybe even help his reputation just slightly, a little bit. Not a ton, but just enough that it's better than zero. So I do find it really kind of interesting and something that I would love to see him do. Uh, but we'll see if the documentary includes him. You, you wouldn't even need... Technically speaking, you wouldn't even need his permission to make the documentary. You could just kind of make it on him and use all the public videos he has. I think he has creative licenses on the videos. So, in short, I do believe that his life story, uh, especially from the penthouse on, is worth making a video on. It is fascinating. It has all the hallmarks of a really good docu-series. Maybe not a movie, right? Maybe not a movie, but a docu-series for sure. Um, I find that the docu-series would be would cover, you know, two parts: the Dallas part and the the gay masseuse part. <laughs> you know that in the. You know, I mean, just think about how interesting his life has been. Many of us couldn't even comprehend just the beginning of his life with being a gay masseuse and stuff. And then hiding it, and then not deleting. Like he, it's almost like, you know how criminals want to be found out. Like criminals always return to a scene of crime. It's almost like that, in my opinion, that he kind of wanted to leave breadcrumbs, and like he knows Reddit. Like at that point in time, he knows Reddit is all on him. He knows Reddit is like talking about all his moves and his, you know, hobbies. And I'm positive he probably checked this account at least once and was like, you know what? I'm going to keep this up because I don't believe that you guys can catch me. Hey, uh, and, and the other thing is maybe he pleads, he takes a plea deal for time served and kind of exposing the gray watch market. That also wouldn't surprise me. Um, I think that would make sense. He, he doesn't seem like a guy who wants to be in jail for a long time. Even though he's been in jail before, now he has the luxury lifestyle and the things. And I think the docuseries could change his life, not just financially, but also finally give him what he really, all he's ever wanted is fame at any cost, at the consigner, consigner's cost, at his client's cost, at his employees. You see how poorly he treats, like in hindsight, he treats people very poorly. And he has no regard for society in general, right? He... Instead of waiting like a normal human being, he'll pay a hundred dollars to cut in line, cut in line in front of you, right? And and it's not like cool. It's not cool. Instead of acting and you know talking to consign, instead of apologizing to people who gave you opportunity after opportunity and trusted you with their watches, he's screaming and yelling at Wesley for not giving him opportunities. <laughs> Where obviously Wesley trusted him enough to give him all the watches. And then the, the whole Bob thing. And the, the crew is something like Trevor. He's in jail for an unrelated crime right now. But he's still being sued by Bob's watches. Like this stuff you can't make up. I mean and for an unrelated cr crime. I mean who knows like where Z is right now. Like there's a bunch of like. Or Alexa. If, I mean there's a shit ton of interesting individuals here. That we just really don't know anything about. And good. I mean just. They came out of the. There, there's like random individuals right. Who we see for an episode. And they're caught in the next episode. And then it deleted. Like someone should compile a list. Of all the running characters. In the saga. I have always said. You know I said this from the beginning. I'm getting really excited now. Because I always thought this would be a comedy series. Like The Office. The Office is the most viewed series of all time. It has generated more income for NBC than any other series they've ever had. Because people still watch it. When Office and Netflix, I used to watch The Office every single day from season on while we were working at the startup. I would just have it on in the background, no audio, right? 
Um, I thought this was The Office. And this dude was the Mike, Michael Scott. Dwight was either Jimmy or Marco or Z. Andy was, you know, Trevor or something. Like, you know, like, it's... I mean, it was just one of these fascinating things in The Office. Darby was kind of like uh, Kevin from The Office, if you guys know Kevin. A uh, very lazy guy. And then maybe Liz was like a Angela type of character. Maybe, maybe, maybe Darby in his mind is actually Dwight and Liz is Angela. And they obviously get together at the end, not to spoil it for you, but it's been a very long time. So if you wanted to watch The Office, you had ample opportunity. I always thought that it wasn't going to be a docu. I thought it was going to be a comedy show. I thought that was the original director, and I loved it, man. Just like how much I love The Office for the reasons that these side characters are so interesting, right? Like, each of these characters has is, like, very unique in their own character. Like, they're, they're very unique individuals. I loved it. I thought it was great. And I really hope to see it as a comedy. I think it would be sad as a docuseries, but then who knows. Anyway, bye, guys.